I wanted to address this really convenient platitude that people like to post that goes, there's no bad product, only a bad price. There are, ooh, fire. There it is. In fact, my own bonus. Oh, fuck. <laughs> bad products. Wow, that's freaking gross, immediately. Uh, that thing right there and that and all that stuff, that was not in this bucket until I emptied part of this. Yeah, you know, the problem with lazy catch-all statements like this, like there are no bad products, is that they're dangerous, they're misleading, uh, and most people won't really fall for it. They, they'll read it in an online comment and just go, yeah, okay, whatever. But it did, you know, I've seen it a lot over the years. This is totally unscripted. I thought it'd be fun to just kind of give some examples of bad products regardless of their price and, uh, and use it as a reason to talk about the 6500 XT a little bit as well. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly. Thermal Grizzly's Hydronaut and Cryonaut thermal pastes are high-performing thermal interfaces for use on CPUs and GPUs. You can bring an old card back to peak performance by repasting it and doing preventative maintenance, and Thermal Grizzly's Hydronaut is ideal for water cooling and air cooling for new and old cards alike. Cryonaut paste is one of the top performing pastes for extreme overclocking with CPUs and GPUs and has been used in several world record scoring machines. Learn more at the link in the description below. All right, so getting started on this, I wanted to find the origin of this quote. Where did it actually come from? And I was able to find a 1992 Bloomberg article in the archives. It's actually on the internet, believe it or not. And the article is speaking with uh, an insurance agency executive who said the quote, there's no bad risk, only bad prices. And that was in reference to the insurance industry, obviously, and getting money in for accepting some form of liability and providing insurance and anything else associated with it. It's the same idea. For more products, consumer level stuff, I was able to find quotes dating back at least a couple of decades uh, in non-technical media and it eventually started bleeding over into technical media. So this quote's been around for a little while and I strongly disagree with it. So that's why we wanted to talk about this. This is just a total for fun piece to be fully upfront and honest with you all. There's not a lot of depth in here, but there's a lot of fun because we're gonna be going through bad products, some that we've tested, some that we didn't get to test, some that we will soon be testing. And uh, so it's a fun excuse to do that and just kind of talk a little bit in a casual way about the market as it stands right now. So although this was originally, we came up with the idea from the 11900K, we remembered it with the 6500 XT uh, from a Reddit thread. And so this video, it's just gonna be me listing bad products uh, as examples of bad products regardless of price. It's entertainment. It's a way for me to sort of vent about this statement that I see posted all the time. Uh, and there's no value here other than maybe laughing at some of the bad products and getting up to speed on them. So I've now disclosed what I need to disclose. There's no value other than comedy. Uh, if we're all on the same page, let's go forward. Someone made the comment, in our comment section in our 11900K review where they were like, the CPU isn't bad, the price is just bad. Which is like, okay, well, the price is bad now, therefore <laughs> CPU is bad. That said, we can see what they were saying. It's a, a sort of a lazy, almost immature way to just kind of try and create an entire argument based on a couple of words, but uh, we see what they're trying to say. What they're trying to say is obviously like, well, uh, if the CPU were $20, it'd be a great CPU. Uh, okay, sort of, sure, in a sense. But let's take it to the extreme because this quote is an absolutism. It's already an extreme. So if there's no bad product, only a bad price, let's, let's go through some examples. Uh, outside of our industry, lettuce with E. coli. Great example of a bad product, regardless of the price. It might kill you, it might not. If you like gambling, then I guess it's still a good product. But uh, that's something that happens if you don't live in the US. Uh, I mean, we get recalls, it seems like every year for stuff like that. But let's go to the computer industry instead, make it a little fair, level the playing field so we don't take it out of context too much. So in the computer industry, examples of bad products. You remember the Enermax Liquitech coolers? Because we do. Those were really disgusting. <laughs> it's just spray. The Liquitech coolers had basically a 100% failure rate, as far as we could tell, uh, where the liquid, it's a Threadripper cooler, it was sadly the best cooler for Threadripper when it's new in box. 
over time, it's no longer the best cooler for Threadripper. It becomes a bad product. And that's because it gets filled up with gunk. Some of this was because we did x-ray analysis on it with uh, someone in forensics we can't name, but they did, uh, did some analysis on the chemicals and the metals in the loop, and it came down to bad quantities of the wrong metals, and we were also suspicious of the water in it being low quality water, causing this gunk buildup and deterioration of the loop with time, where now it's not even a good product at zero dollars, and uh, if, let's take it to the other extreme. They pay you to take it. It's still not a good product because it's not a product. It doesn't do anything anymore. It's just jammed up. It actually doesn't function, and your CPU would not be cool. It'd be the same temperature as if you ran it without a cooler. These coolers are disgusting. And I'm going to pull a Reddit commenter here and argue it to the extreme where, let's say, uh, okay, but it's still useful if you take it for free and then you bring it to a metal recycler and you take the check for the scrap metal of a dollar, 30 cents, whatever it is, uh, it's not a product anymore, it's just scrap. So it, not a good product, doesn't matter the price. That's an example of that. Um, the GB, the 6500 XT is the one that sort of triggered this content piece more recently because I got into a little back and forth with someone on Reddit who was saying, there are no bad products, only bad prices. So that's why we're talking about this now. Now another example of a bad product, uh, the NDXT H1. So we got it, and now we just have to diagnose what that was. I'm Your thermal couple's going up a little bit. <laughs> oh yeah, we're in 140, 205 degrees on the thermal couple. When it first came out, and for whatever, a year or so after, with the riser cable that had a 12 volt power plane at the surface of the cable that would short to ground when they would drive a screw into the PCB, which was for some reason a load-bearing PCB, where the screw would thread the PCB uh, hole internally and then thread into the case, causing a direct path to ground. Yeah, that was a bad product. It doesn't matter what they cost. In fact, you might get a massive payout for that one because it might literally kill you in your sleep. It was dangerous. <laughs> so you want to talk about bad products for maybe a negative price at that extreme end, uh, okay, yeah, you could get paid pretty well for the NZXT H1 because it might take your house and everything you own with it if it happens to go up in flames when you're not there. So great example, bad product, prices are relevant. Everybody here can guess the next one, Gigabyte Power Supplies, at least the first version of the GP750M. Exploding power supply, even for cheap, and remember, it was at one point on Newegg, uh, it had the little badge next to the price that said lowest price in 30 days. That was shortly after we started covering the explosions in it. Wonder why the price had dropped so precipitously. Uh, that was an example where the product was so bad that even this lowest price in 30 days wasn't enough to clear the inventory because it explodes. So it might. Take things out with it. If you're lucky, it'll just kill the power supply, but it might also kill something like the video card or the motherboard. So no, it's, again, it's not quite as simple as low price, ipso facto, good product. It's not how it works with bad products. Uh, Fallout, this is, this is a good one. We didn't get to cover this, but if you're not familiar with it, Fallout 76 helmets, the special helmets that came out for the game that everybody hated. Uh, there was another reason to hate it, which was that those helmets got recalled because of mold that was in the cloth, the piece that inserted into the helmet. That piece was moldy. When it was recalled, the statement for the recall said uh, there was a risk of respiratory infection, and it said that there was especially a risk for people with, quote, compromised immune systems, damaged lungs, or an allergy to mold. Is it a good product if it's zero dollars? This is one we didn't film, but it did happen here. We weren't expecting it. That's why we didn't film it. Uh, a Logitech headset. It was actually a G633. So the Logitech headset we were using in the house for a, a while. And one day, Andrew, who was wearing it, smelled smoke. Uh, then we realized, oh, wait, no, no, there's actually smoke in here. And it's coming from the headset cable attached to the headset on your head. So that one we weren't expecting. He ripped the headset off. 
I pulled the cable out of the computer. It was extremely hot to the touch, and the, pla the rubber and the plastic were both melting on the cable. That's an example of a bad product. The cable was bad. It was dangerous. You wear the thing on your head, it's got smoke pouring out of it. I guess you could cosplay as a modern version of the pirate Blackbeard, except instead of the, like, the burning whatever he put in his ears, he just wears the Logitech and headphones, and it does kind of the same thing. So maybe it's a feature. I don't know. Maybe it's a good product. Another product that's bad. Google Stadia. Nope. Didn't work. Moving on, the scam USB key we reviewed. We're gonna go faster now. It was a cheap USB key. It was claiming two terabytes, but what they do is a firmware fake. It's a scam. It makes you think that it's two terabytes. It's actually anywhere from a couple megabytes to a couple gigabytes. You could maybe argue that, okay, at zero dollars, that's a good product because you get a couple gigabyte USB key to which we would respond. Uh, those are also sold with malware on them. So have fun with that. The GT730, this is a fantastic example because this isn't a dangerous product like some of the other ones we've just listed are. So it's a little more nebulous. But there's about 12 different versions of the GT730. We'll pop up the SKU page. And one of them is a GT430 that's been pulled forward for 11 years. It's an 11-year-old card that they renamed the same as a card that's still made and sold today on a newer and completely different GPU architecture. And the difference is such that the GT730 is called a GT730 in vBIOS, but it's actually a GT430. And so what happens is NVIDIA stopped updating the GT430 drivers, so it's no longer supported as of about three years ago, maybe four. But because it's called a GT730, which exists by more modern standards and is getting driver updates, games think that the GT730, that's a 430, is just using older drivers and they'll refuse to launch and tell you to update your drivers, which is literally f***ing impossible because the drivers are no longer supported because it's a GT430. Do you see the problem? It's a bad product because although, yes, it's a GPU that can kind of be used, even though it's worse than an IGP and all Intel CPUs from the last couple of years, uh, and therefore irrelevant. It's still a GPU, but because the drivers were dropped, but the name has changed to reflect the name of a card that's still being supported today, games and software don't understand the disconnect there. They don't know it's a 430. They're going by vBIOS and firmware. They think it's a 730. And so what do they do? They refuse to work. And they tell you to update your drivers, which you can't do. Now you're stuck in an infinite loop. Congratulations on your good product that you got for cheap. Next one, fake SD cards. It's the same thing as the USB key scam. We covered these. There were some fake Samsung cards that claimed to be, I think it was 32 gigabytes, but they were not that. Uh, they were much smaller. And again, you run the risk of malware on one of these devices. Dual link DVI cables that are scams. This is an older one, but something that Stone and I covered many years ago. And the issue here was that the end of the dual link cables was dual link. So it would look dual link. They might even market it as dual link, but the wiring internally was only for single link. So you actually didn't get dual link. Ergo, scam. Ergo, not good product. And the reason this isn't a good product is because if you're buying it for dual link, even for $1, it's not. So it's bad. Maybe you could say, yes, but it's still useful as a single link DVI cable, except then you're living in a uh, fantasy land because if the price of that fake dual link cable comes down so much that it costs the same as a single link DVI cable, the single link DVI cable will also be cheaper because that's how the market works. The prices move in relation to each other, not in a vacuum. So it doesn't matter if the product gets cheaper magically because probably its neighbors are getting cheaper too. There are times this isn't the case. For example, 500 series air cooler that we reviewed, the one that was so malformed on the surface of the cold plate uh, that it basically didn't really work as a cooler. That dropped from $100 after our review, oops, to 30. It was on sale for 30, $27 on Newegg was the price. In that instance, the price moved completely disconnected from every other cooler in the market. It was free to move on its own and it became a product that was maybe defensible for purchase because the price had plummeted so hard that now this 
garbage $100 cooler has become a maybe defensible $30 cooler. So I'll give you that one. That's an example of this is a, a bad product and the price came down and it's still a bad product, but it's a good deal. So maybe that's not really giving that one, but you get the idea. It's, we're, we're meeting halfway there. Give you a more extreme example. Razer's mask, getting back to the safety ones. Razer's Zephyr mask, the one that says it has N95 grade filters inside of a mask, which does not form a complete seal on your face, and therefore it's not N95. It doesn't matter what you think of masks. doesn't matter where anyone stands on this topic. Uh, the only thing that matters here, and we can all agree on this, is that marketing bullshit silly and what Razer was doing it was exploitative marketing bullshit regardless of viewpoint anywhere because they made it sound like N95 grade filters on a mask that doesn't seal and therefore doesn't actually do what the filters are capable of doing if they were installed in something properly. So uh, that's another great example of something that is a bad product not only because it doesn't do what it advertises, but because what it advertises has potentially dangerous side effects if you think it does the things that it advertises. Even if you're going to wear it in construction or something, or working with concrete, or working on staining your table where you want some kind of air filtration, so you're not breathing in the toxins from working with those chemicals, it becomes dangerous. Therefore, bad product, regardless of the stupidly high price. Really fast, last one's here. Uh, the Ramsey's R780, it's, it's not better than nothing. Literally nothing would be better than the R780. Putting your computer inside of that case makes it hotter and throttle in every way. You'd be better off putting it on the carpet and rolling the dice on ESD in the winter when it's cold and dry. Another one, uh, the Walmart PC. They sent us the wrong one. It was a lot cheaper, and also it sucked anyway. The 7740X, anyone remember that? Like, genuinely, post the comment when you hear the name 7740X with what your response is, because this one was a 7700K that went into an X99 platform, but only had two channels instead of four, so you didn't get those. It had screwed up PCIe lanes, so you don't get that benefit, and you have to buy a more expensive motherboard. So even if the CPU is cheap because Intel discontinued it within a year or something like that, which is one of its fastest discontinuations ever, even if it's cheap, you still have to buy more expensive other components to go with it. The Cooler Master Master Liquid 240, the original one from about four or five years ago, uh, this was another one we didn't catch on camera because we weren't expecting it. It sprung a leak and started spraying the propylene glycol everywhere. Bad product. This was somewhat common with that round before they later fixed it and rolled out changes. So that's one where it doesn't matter the price, and they were really cheap. They were like 40 bucks for 240s. Uh, the risk is that you might kill the components in your system because it starts spraying everywhere. Another example, the PlayStation fan that blows air back into the chassis. That's right. The hot air coming out is assisted in reverse by the fan on the back that you bought for whatever $15 on Amazon because it blows air into the case. We reviewed that one too, that was fun. I think the point has been made. Please stop saying that. It's not true. I'm fine if you want to make the argument of the 6500 XT isn't bad if it's sold at XYZ price. I'd probably agree with you on that. If someone said the 6500 XT or the i9-11900K, this is where we saw the comment months ago where it originally prompted this idea before it was sort of uh, reinvigorated to do it with the, the 65 XT cons. You know, the 11900K, if you say, well, it's not a bad product if it's $200, uh, I guess I agree with you. I, I don't know. I mean, it's still, it's still bad, but it's it's no longer lacking value. Now it has value. So I'll seed that one. I'll give that one. If, if the 11 i k is 200 bucks, it has become a good value. And I suppose, therefore, it's a good product to buy at that price. The same is for the 65 XT. 100 bucks, eh, OK, I guess. Like, it's worse than a 5500 XT. It's worse than an RX 580. It's worse than a GTX 1066 gigabyte from 2016 or 17. But OK, sure, yeah, okay, that's it's. It's better now. It makes more sense now. The value is better. The product's still kind of bad because they've cut HEVC support. So H.265, they've cut AV1 support. Uh, it's not running off PCIe lanes. And so it's still kind of bad because they've pulled a laptop GPU that's meant to be paired with a laptop APU out of a laptop, put it into a desktop where you might not have that encode decode support from the CPU anyway. So that's still bad. But 
uh, sure, the value is better if the price is lower. So that's it. That's a bunch of bad products for the most part. What bad products have you worked with in your life? I would love to know. Leave a comment in the comments below. Uh, I want to read a lot of them, and I'm sure everyone else will too. But at the end of the day, here's what it comes down to. If the argument is just for the sake of argument and is saying it's not a bad product, it's just a bad price, just add a little bit more effort to it than that. Because when we and other reviewers put a week into testing something with three or four people on it, working literally around the clock, um, we put a lot of effort into the argument we're making. So when the argument is uh, just the price is bad, it's like, uh, yeah, I mean, I could say that too, and I have said that. And you know what people say to me? You're not being realistic. Sure, they can't make the price lower, so it doesn't matter. So it's, it seems kind of one-sided when that happens. Anyway, uh, I had fun with this. It was honestly, I just I talked to Patrick and to Stone on the team, and I said, hey, let's sit down and just brainstorm some bad products. And oh man, there was like one after another. I had to cut the list short. So hope you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I don't know. If you want some value, go watch one of our reviews with a bunch of benchmark charts in it. Uh, we have a lot of tests on this on the channel. We did a 6500 XT. We have PCIe Gen 3 and Gen 4 in there. It's pretty interesting stuff. The Rainbow Six results in particular, very interesting. So that's where you can get your objective data fix. Uh, but for this one, yeah, I had fun. I hope you did too. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. You can go to store.gamersaccess.net if you'd like to support us directly, like by buying one of our toolkits, mouse mats or mod mats, or you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Thanks for watching. See you all next time.